Joshua chapter 20 Then the Lord said to Joshua, Tell the Israelites to designate the cities of refuge, as I instructed you through Moses, so that anyone who kills a person accidentally and unintentionally may flee there and find protection from the avenger of blood. When they flee to one of these cities, they are to stand in the entrance of the city gate and state their case before the elders of that city. Then the elders are to admit the fugitive into their city and provide a place to live among them. If the avenger of blood comes in pursuit, the elders must not surrender the fugitive because the fugitive killed their neighbor unintentionally and without malice aforethought. They are to stay in that city until they have stood trial before the assembly and until the death of the high priest who is serving at that time. Then they may go back to their own home in the town from which they fled. So they set apart Kedesh in Galilee in the hill country of Naphtali, Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arba, that is Hebron, in the hill country of Judah. East of the Jordan, on the other side from Jericho, they designated Beza in the wilderness on the plateau in the tribe of Reuben, Ramoth in Gilead in the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan in the tribe of Manasseh. Any of the Israelites or any foreigner residing among them who killed someone accidentally could flee to these designated cities and not be killed by the avenger of blood prior to standing trial before the assembly. Joshua chapter 21 Now the family heads of the Levites approached Eleazar the priest, Joshua son of Nun, and the heads of the other tribal families of Israel at Shiloh in Canaan and said to them, The Lord commanded through Moses that you give us towns to live in with pasture lands for our livestock. So, as the Lord had commanded, the Israelites gave the Levites the following towns and pasture lands out of their own inheritance. The first lot came out for the Kohathites according to their clans. The Levites, who were descendants of Aaron the priest, were allotted thirteen towns from the tribes of Judah, Simeon, and Benjamin. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted ten towns from the clans of the tribes of Ephraim, Dan, and half of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon were allotted thirteen towns from the clans of the tribes of Issachar, Asia, Naphtali, and the half-tribe of Manasseh in Bashan. The descendants of Merari, according to their clans, received twelve towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites allotted to the Levites these towns and their pasture lands, as the Lord had commanded through Moses. From the tribes of Judah and Simeon, they allotted the following towns by name. These towns were assigned to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the Kohathite clans of the Levites, because the first lot fell to them. They gave them Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, with its surrounding pasture land in the hill country of Judah. Arba was the forefather of Anak. But the fields and villages around the city they had given to Caleb, son of Jephune, as his possession. So, to the descendants of Aaron the priest, they gave Hebron, a city of refuge for one accused of murder, Libna, Jatir, Eshtumoah, Holon, Debir, Ein, Jatta, and Beth Shemesh, together with their pasture lands, nine towns from these two tribes. And from the tribe of Benjamin, they gave them Gibeon, Jeba, Anathoth, and Almon, together with their pasture lands, four towns. The total number of towns for the priests, the descendants of Aaron, came to thirteen, together with their pasture lands. The rest of the Kohathite clans of the Levites were allotted towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country of Ephraim, they were given Shechem, a city of refuge for one accused of murder, and Giza. Kibzim and Beth Horan, together with their pasture lands, four towns. Also, from the tribe of Dan, they received Eltike, Gibbethon, Ajalon, and Gathrimon, together with their pasture lands, four towns. From half the tribe of Manasseh, they received Teonach and Gathrimon, together with their pasture lands, two towns. All these ten towns and their pasture lands were given to the rest of the Kohathite clans. The Levite clans of the Gershonites were given 
from the half-tribe of Manasseh, Golan Imbashan, a city of refuge for one accused of murder, and B. Eshteroth, together with their pasture lands, two towns, from the tribe of Issachar, Kishion, Dabarath, Jamoth, and Enganim, together with their pasture lands, four towns, from the tribe of Asher, Mishal, Abdon, Helkath, and Rehob, together with their pasture lands, four towns, from the tribe of Naphtali, Kedesh in Galilee, a city of refuge for one accused of murder, Hamoth Dor and Kartan, together with their pasture lands, three towns. The total number of towns of the Gershonite clans came to thirteen, together with their pasture lands. The Merarite clans, the rest of the Levites, were given from the tribe of Zebulun, Jokniam, Karta, Dimna, and Nahalal, together with their pasture lands, four towns. From the tribe of Reuben, Beza, Jehaz, Kedamoth, and Mephaeath, together with their pasture lands, four towns. From the tribe of Gad, Ramoth in Gilead, a city of refuge for one accused of murder, Mahanaim, Hezbon, and Jeza, together with their pasture lands, four towns in all. The total number of towns allotted to the Merarite clans, who were the rest of the Levites, came to twelve. The towns of the Levites in the territory held by the Israelites were forty-eight in all, together with their pasture lands. Each of these towns had pasture lands surrounding it. This was true for all these towns. So the Lord gave Israel all the land he had sworn to give their ancestors, and they took possession of it and settled there. The Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their ancestors. Not one of their enemies withstood them, the Lord gave all their enemies into their hands. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Luke chapter 14 One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There, in front of him, was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, Will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, Blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, A certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, 
for everything is now ready. But they all, alike, began to make excuses. The first said, I've just bought a field, and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in, so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Large crowds were travelling with Jesus, and turning to them he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, This person began to build and wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able, with ten thousand men, to oppose the one coming against him with twenty thousand? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure heap. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. Psalm 82 God presides in the great assembly. He renders judgment among the gods. How long will you defend the unjust and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. The gods know nothing. They understand nothing. They walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Rise up, O God, judge the earth, for all the nations are your inheritance. Proverbs chapter 20 Wine is a mocker and beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath strikes terror like the roar of a lion. Those who anger him forfeit their lives. It is to one's honour to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Sluggards do not plough in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. When a king sits on his throne to judge, he winnows out all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure, I am clean and without sin. Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Even small children are known by their actions, 
so is their conduct really pure and upright? Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep, or you will grow poor. Stay awake, and you will have food to spare. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer, then goes off and boasts about the purchase. Gold there is, and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel. Plans are established by seeking advice, so if you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness. An inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and he will avenge you. The Lord detests differing weights, and dishonest scales do not please him. A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? It is a trap to dedicate something rashly, and only later to consider one's vows. A wise king winnows out the wicked. He drives the threshing wheel over them. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through love, his throne is made secure. The glory of young men is their strength, grey hair the splendour of the old. Blows and wounds scrub away evil, and beatings purge the inmost being.